This section will quickly illustrate how I2O works. I.O. mapping configuration examples and application examples will be shown in the next several slides. How does I2O work? I2O is easily accomplished by using Ethernet, Modbus, TCP IP protocol and built-in I.O. mapping web pages within the I.O. modules. The top screen capture shows the I.O. mapping page for a discrete input module. Groups of four discrete input channels are broken up into ports. Each four-channel port can be mapped to a designated IP address located anywhere on the network. During configuration, the user decides whether the discrete update should occur based on change of state, timed updates, or both. Once configured, the module will mirror the status of the four-channel port in a one-to-one -one fashion at the receiving IP address location. The bottom screen capture shows the I.O. mapping for analog inputs. You'll notice that each individual channel can be mapped to two IP addresses. So, a one-to-two uh, one mapping strategy can be achieved on a per-channel basis. During configuration, the user decides how fast the analog inputs should update the outputs based on time. The update times can range from 1 to 90 seconds. A Modbus register corresponding to an Acromag analog output module channel must also be programmed. This allows users to map channel 1 on an input module to any channel on an output module. After input mapping is done, users requiring fail-safe systems can then configure the watchdog timer and output state within the output modules. With watchdog timers and output states configured, users can be assured that the output modules will hold last value or go to a predefined state in the event of a network communications loss. The screen capture shown illustrates how the temperature input modules are configured. You'll notice they are configured the same way as analog inputs with one extra feature. The temperature input modules include temperature scaling fields. So, users can configure a thermocouple or RTD input scaled for 0 to 100 degrees C, for example, to correspond with the 4 to 20 milliamp analog output signal. Basically, Acromag has engineered true transmitter-like scaling and functionality within the temperature input modules. The next two slides will illustrate a simple four-channel discrete input to discrete output I2O system. The requirements are simple. Four normally open discrete inputs are to be mirrored as four normally open discrete outputs. We want updates to be based on change of state and time so quick momentary closures will be captured. And in the event of network communications failure or, or power loss, we'll want the discrete output switch to remain open. From the top screen capture, you can see that we'll turn on change of state updates for port zero. Also, we'll program the timed updates for every 30 seconds, which will basically act as a heartbeat for the system. We'll map the four channel port over to IP address 128.1.1.183. The bottom screen capture shows how we're configuring the watchdog timer and output states on the discrete output module. The watchdog timer is set to 3C hex, which corresponds to 60 seconds decimal. The output state is set to a zero, which means all four output channels for port zero will be de-energized if communications does not occur within 60 seconds. One thing that could be noted at this point, if the user was interested in looping back the status of the discrete output, they would simply wire the output to a channel on port one and set up I2O communications similarly going back to the input module. Bidirectional switching, validation, and integrity is that simple. In example two, a simple analog I2O system will be illustrated. In this basic system, we'll configure two analog input signals being mirrored to two analog output channels in a remote location. Updates will be based on time, and in the event of communications loss, we'll want the analog outputs to hold their last value indefinitely.
The top screen capture is showing how to configure channels 0 and 1 on the analog input module. You'll notice both channels are set for one second updates and will be mapped to the same IP address. Two different Modbus registers are shown which indicate two different output channels on the analog output module. The bottom screen capture shows how to configure the watchdog timer and output state values for the analog output module. You'll notice the watchdog timer is set to 65535 and the output state is set to minus one, which means they are disabled. So, in the event of communications loss to the output module, the analog output channels will hold their last values indefinitely until they are updated properly by the input module. Example 3 shows how easy it is to set up a small bi-directional I2O system with just two combo modules. Acromag's 951EN and 952EN combo modules allow users to configure very small systems that can send two analog channels and three discrete channels both directions with the use of only two modules. To keep I2O systems simple, users should always pair combo modules with combo modules six channel analog input modules with six channel analog output modules and twelve channel DIO modules with twelve channel DIO modules. Other configurations will certainly work but this simple strategy will keep your system diagrams and maintenance easy and straightforward. A screen capture of the I.O. mapping page for the combo modules is shown. Basically it is the same mapping strategy for discretes and analogs as shown earlier in other modules.